Welcome to the What I Meant to Say podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Jones, and I started these conversations because life doesn't give us do-overs. So this is a space where we get a chance to reflect and tell our story again with more grace for ourselves and hopefully make us all better for having listened. Today I'm talking with Kaylee York, an LSU beach volleyball alum who recently made the move to California to play professionally. Kaylee has a quiet strength about her that I noticed right away and a passion for helping younger athletes navigate health and wholeness through nutrition. She's also one of the Be Better featured athletes, and I'm so excited to be talking with her today. Thanks for coming in. In your street clothes, nonetheless. Yes, in real clothes. (laughs) (laughs) Jason didn't uh, recognize you from when we were in Coconut Beach, which is where we hooked up the first time. And I remember watching you and Tony play and... It's just our story kind of started there, and it's I'm happy to have you here today. Yeah, quite the switch up. You know, got my hair down, got yeah. jeans on, don't have visor glasses. Um, no, so happy to be here and glad to be a part of this. Yeah, I just, I, I love connecting with the players of your generation. It just, there's something about, I guess it's, you know, being a mom and raising athletes and then being an athlete and just not feeling that far away from the stories that, were part of my life that are now where you guys are and where my own kids are and just figuring out what we can learn through the process. And you guys are also inspiring and open about, you know, what you've gone through and what your athletic journey has been like. And you went through LSU and being an alum and now you're headed out here and playing in California and, you know, doing the the climb and the grind to the pro thing. So, and then there's all the entrepreneurial stuff that goes along the side so, I mean, I'm just excited to dig into your story and, um, you know, just let me know, you know, what you're learning and where you've come from and all those things. So, yeah, let's start out with your LSU career, I guess, and like where, you know, where volleyball became a passion for you. Yeah. Um, no, LSU was a really amazing opportunity. Um, I definitely went through... I don't feel like I had a very traditional career. Um, I definitely went from not playing, not traveling, um, to playing at the sixes two different years, to playing at the twos, to playing at the fives, playing as a blocker, playing as a defender. Like, I think I was just kind of all over the place. And so I really grew a lot and learned a lot through my time at LSU. But um, I think I went through phases, but at the end of it, you know, my love for volleyball only grew stronger. And that's now why I'm pursuing professional plays because, you know, I still have such a fire for the game, and that came a lot from what all the things I learned at LSU. What were some of the coaching strategies? I know Russell's just watching from a distance is just an amazing coach, and you guys seem to have such a closeness. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. just a really amazing closeness between the girls that all played down there. And um, so, what were some of the things that he taught you? Oh man. Um, some of the things I think Russell really taught me how important um, heart is on the team and just like really being a family. And I think that's something that he really wanted to represent in our program. And I think that's something that LSG does a really great job of is, you know, yes, we want to perform at a really high level and yes, we want to compete and, you know, we're getting the reps, we're working super hard. Um, but at the same time too, like, the amount of times we end a practice with like talking about the person next to us about what they did great that day or what I care about them or um, things I admire about them. Like those were conversations we were having constantly. Um, And I think he does a really great job of really honoring that within our program and keeping true to that even through, um, because you know, when I committed, I think LSU was maybe number seven. And then um, during my time there, we ended up being number one at a certain point. And so even through the growth of that um, and playing at a higher level, you know, he still honored that part of, you know, we're still a family and we still love and care about each other. Um, And I think that was probably the biggest thing is just learning how to honor that through everything. Yeah. And there is such a kindness I wrote about you for as one of the, yeah, there he is. (laughs) That's Savannah in the background there. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Thanks Jay. Great picture. Um, There's such a kindness about you. Um, that I noticed from the first time that I met you. And I think a lot of times when you're competing in sports and maybe when you're battling and struggling and you're at the sixes or you're not traveling, and then you are asked to support those other teammates that are maybe beating you out. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, you do have that innate kindness, but that was that a struggle for you when oh, you were? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think that's such a, a strange thing in our sport, um, in sports in general. It's like, I want to be there and I'm working hard to be there. And I, um, that's obviously my goal, but when it comes down to it, you know, we want LSU to win. And I think understanding and trusting that the coaches are going to put who um, they think is going to win on the court and respecting that. Um, And I think having relationships with all the girls outside of the court, um, I think makes that a lot easier too. You know, when I have a relationship past volleyball with you, um, even though that's the spot I want to be in and I want to be competing, it's much easier to be there and support you because I know you as a person I care about you as a person so much more than a volleyball player um so I think that was probably the biggest thing but you know it's a really hard thing to do even when you do care about that person um because you know we're all athletes we're all competitive yeah um and that's where we want to be and so um I think finding the balance of that is definitely a growth um thing the maturity thing as well absolutely absolutely and what are some of those things you that you did as a player when you were at LSU to like create that the, the, those friendships that were more bonded than just being on the court together um yeah I think our team really tried to make a point of doing things outside of um like practice together yeah. um I know it was really nice when LSU got the dining hall we had an athlete dining hall oh, nice. um and all of us would you know I remember we'd all shower at practice and then all of us would go have dinner together and like it's such a simple thing, but just like totally. spending that time together, like I would, we would have like, they had like cereal eating contests. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> seriously, we just did the stupidest stuff. Um, and then like a few girls would have a Bible study. And so we'd spend time talking about those things as well um, and getting to connect with the girls on a deeper level. And um, well, I love that because yeah. you had Liv on your team yep. and I bet she was one of the ones leading that oh that. both lives both Bo- lives okay yeah <laughs> so um what's Liv's last name not which now. one Byer um, Byer now there Blackburn you go. No, uh yes exactly that's yeah. what was confusing me so she ended up playing with my daughter at TCU when Lauren was a freshman mm-hmm. Liv was still playing and her influence for Lauren was incredible the and it's kindest like kindest human kindest human and getting getting her into FCA and just mm-hmm. getting out and seeing what but creating those bonds like it's fun to watch it go from program to program and the way that girls move around now with the fifth year and now Mm -hmm. the COVID year all this you know it's really fun to see these friendships come through and it's always something deeper than volleyball oh yeah like the real the ones that hang around and support and really become something that'll be lifelong they're always they start with volleyball but they run so much deeper so much deeper and like I think, you know, not everyone on our team was Christian, and but I think um, opening up the Bible study, I think it was very comfortable for everyone to come. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was kind of just more of an avenue to explore those deeper conversations and yeah. have those deeper um, talks. And I think that's really what made a difference on our team is being able to connect on a deeper level. Yeah, and it, regardless of whatever faith it is, that ab- ability to be vulnerable yeah and oh, say is huge I'm struggling like anytime I've yes. gone out to an athlete and said tell me what's special about your team they nine times out of ten will talk about their their ability to be vulnerable with their mm-hmm. teammates and yeah. if, if whether a coach is helping support that the girls on the team or even the guys like yeah. I've talked to some some men's volleyball players it's scary and it's if you don't have that ability mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of things that'll lock you down and then lock you out of your performance potential yeah right Completely. so yeah I don't know um have you ever read Brene Brown oh huge oh, fan. oh my gosh huge <laughs> fan. I'm in the middle of her new one right now oh, I haven't gotten gosh. through it yet she's but amazing my idol like I just absolutely adore her but I love how she I talks love about hearing girls your age talk about this oh, stuff it's like so it's cool. so amazing oh. and, and not to say you're not a woman but like you're 20 something years younger than me and <laughs> I'm down like, there, you're right? like, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting old <laughs> yeah don't believe me you're not but <laughs> I get it I do um, but yeah, so you've read her, her stuff and yeah, oh, she, God. and the science backed stuff that she mm-hmm. proves right. about, you know, performance and the way that we connect with each other. And yeah. that's like where, I, when I started my blog, I just wanted to have a place where people could share stories and say like, it's, 
Yeah. The, the good side of me too, that took on a whole nother, but like when you share your story and someone else comes along and says, yeah, I, I battled with that too. It is, it's freeing. So real. And yeah. like being vulnerable, I feel like is honoring your story, kind of what you're yeah. saying and like stepping into your authentic self. And, you know, I love the saying that like every team is meant to function at a hundred percent and a hundred percent is each person stepping into their most authentic selves. You yeah. know, and I think that really does begin with vulnerability. And yeah. I think um, being brave enough to step into that vulnerability is a huge thing. And like, I think uh, coaches and older players creating the space to be able to step into that um, and the culture for that is really important as well. Yeah. So as you came through your college career, did you see different points, like maybe different points of maturity where you were able to step a little bit more, a little bit more, or was it like, uh, you know, all of a sudden there you felt comfortable? Oh yeah. I definitely think, uh, I grew over time. Um, and I mean, I just added more experiences. Um, so I felt more willing and pushed to share. I think, um, the biggest thing I felt, um, kind of a push as I got older was that I did experience not traveling and then to traveling. And so being able to kind of hopefully bridge that gap between girls and being able to understand both points of view. Um, because I mean, at LSU, we had 28 girls that's my huge. senior year and yeah. 14 of us traveled. Um, yeah, that's so, half your team. Yeah, home. it was insane. Yeah. And that, that's such a hard thing. And, um, being able to have been in both sides, I think was really important. And I felt the need to talk about that um, and to try to provide both perspectives for both sides of the team. Yeah. So. And I mean, and that's, that goes to that principle of being able to lead from whatever position you're being asked to play. Right. Oh yeah. And honestly, Hard. when you're, when, when there's 14 girls at home, you know, the upside from my very mature point of view, cause I know the, the pain of not traveling, mm-hmm. but like the upside is half your team's there. Yeah. So what can you do together mm-hmm. to create that bond? Because usually it's the younger girls, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're they're going to be there and they're going to be coming through. So you're mm-hmm. building things that are going to serve you in the years to come. But it's always that delayed gratification that is like oh, so yeah. difficult. Oh, yeah. And we had some really good um, seniors, especially my, I think it was my sophomore year. We had some really good seniors who um, didn't travel and they were on it. Like they got everyone together. They got everyone practicing. They were super encouraging and wow. like... It was so cool to watch and it was really inspiring for me. And I think I learned a lot from those players and those people in general um, to just take whatever circumstance they had and run with it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that I learned um, because of them at that age. And so that was like a really big turning point. I think my sophomore year is being able to take what's given to you and just go. Yeah. You know, absolutely. So do you do you have siblings? I do. I have a brother. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Younger, older? He's younger. Younger. He's 20. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh, she's 20. <laughs> isn't that, I know. Isn't that crazy? It's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're how old? I'm 23. 23. So that three feels years weird apart. to say, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and where does he, does he, is he an athlete? Um, he was. So he was a preferred walk on to NC State for football. Okay. Um, but ended up having back surgery. Mm. Um, and so he was unable to continue playing. And so he actually this year transferred to LSU. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, so now we live together and I'm trying to get him into beach volleyball. Oh, so very, Quinn, if you're listening to this. More forgiving than football. <laughs> I'm I'm totally with you on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's been really cool. Does watch that transition too. I mean, football, beach volleyball, not similar definitely sports. Definitely not. Definitely <laughs> not. But so much kinder to your body. So, so much right? kinder, and I think funner. But yeah, absolutely. Personal opinion, yeah. personal lifelong. Bias. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, what was your some of the things that your parents instilled in you guys, like as athletes and and people growing up? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, um, we were never allowed to quit anything. Um, Mm -hmm. except for cheerleading. (laughs) I was allowed to quit cheerleading. (laughs) So they let Um, you try cheerleading. They let me try cheerleading. That was the only thing. how long did that last? Um, I went to one basketball game that I cheered for and I got home that night and I told my parents that I wanted to play basketball. I love it. Um, so my parents were like, okay, like, no, we don't want you to quit anything, but like, yeah, okay. (laughs) We'll make this one exception. Yeah, make an exception. As long as you understand it's not okay to quit things. Uh-huh. Um, 
No, except I for think, cheerleading. Except for cheerleading. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to cheerleading. I know. I was never a cheerleader, and oh. I never. I haven't raised a cheerleader, and I know they compete, and I've seen some of the things they can do, and They're I amazing. always wished I could do a back handspring. Oh, so me too. I, no. Like absolutely. Complete respect. Not my way thing. too tall for gymnastics. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I think just like the work ethic. Um and just really um, honoring your teammates and um, playing for your teammates and playing for yourself and just working really hard. And um, my parents did so much for me as an athlete. Like I'm forever grateful for the things that they sacrificed and they did. And, you know, my parents would, I played volleyball and soccer at the same time. And so my parents would, um, it was in the same season. My parents would, I'd leave 30 minutes early from soccer practice. They would drive me like 30 minutes cross town to volleyball practice. And then like, on the weekends I'd play the AM way for volleyball then drive like two hours to go play my soccer game so like my parents were doing all of these things and like absolutely do you remember when you got when you got your driver's license like oh yeah yeah. and then were they like bye Kaylee yeah did did you well they were freaking out because oh (laughs) I think I turned my phone off um (laughs) when um I got my driver's license is actually when I switched to a club in Tampa Uh and so my parents were like you have to drive an hour yeah, I can do it. Uh-huh. Like, I'm good. Yeah. I think they might have been a little nervous yeah, about that one. Yeah, completely. But that was a lot more driving for them, so it yeah. was nice. That's actually one of my favorite sports memories, though, was when I learned how to drive and I could get out of the pool, yeah. get in my car, and drive over to Fresno State and go to club volleyball practice yeah. and come home. And oh, just what a be, switch. Oh, Swim to volleyball. Swim to volleyball. Ooh, like these that wet hair. Are, yeah, yeah. shoulders are tired, <laughs> but yeah. But just, oh, and then that feeling afterwards when you're just oh, so yeah. exhausted. Like, so, I'm still addicted to that. Oh, yeah. Like, it's so it, strange. Like, yeah. why? Why are we addicted I to know. that? It's, yeah. I don't know. But it's so, like, you just feel so accomplished. I know. <laughs> like, wow, I did all of that today. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and it was so fun. Like, totally. So, um, I know you've gotten into nutrition. You were a kinesiology major, right? I was, yeah. So um, that's what um, my daughter is a kinesiology major too. And I've gotten into, I'm so interested in that later in life, so just fun. with mm-hmm. like being, you know, bodies in motion and mm-hmm. having some injuries and then figuring out why oh, and, yeah. you know, all of that stuff. So, and then raising athletes. So I'm way more into that now than I ever was yeah. growing up. But yeah. watching her be a kinesiology major and then, you know, just you've tied nutrition into that. Yeah. All these things are my passions now, too. Oh, so another so thing that we can, uh, connected on. Yeah, yeah. It's so fascinating. And um, so I actually blew my knee out when I was 17, um, which I think kind of led me into that kinesiology route uh-huh. um, and learning how the body moved. And um, I got really into CrossFit at the time and my gym there. And um, the trainer there was just so knowledgeable. And so he taught me so much. Was it ACL? Yeah. Um, it was ACL, MCL, medial lateral meniscus, and LCL. Oh, you really did yeah, it. Yeah, I really, it Good went, Lord. it just went. Okay. Um, oh. In the sand? No, I was playing indoor oh, at the time. Okay. Yeah, so that was uh-huh. the end of my indoor career. Um, but, I mean, thankfully, um, I was committed to LSU already, and Russell was super understanding, um, which I'm very thankful that for. Cause, amazing. Like, people like Tony, like, that yeah, wasn't the her case. Yeah, story was... I mean, Unreal. you guys just, yeah, so, that's another thing, is, like, the sustained injuries at your age. I didn't know someone that tore their ACL until we were well in, into college. Yeah. I remember the first girl, she's like, I'm like, what is that? Now, you know, I go into my orthopedist, and there's just scattered with 15-year-olds oh, yeah. with knee braces on, mm-hmm. you, you know. There's a lot to all of these overuse and injuries and oh, yeah. how hard everyone's playing and how mm-hmm. much and the extra lessons and it's yeah. it's just yeah. it's a lot on the body. And like like you said overuse is such a big thing um being able to not only get stronger but like be functionally yes. efficient I think is a really big thing. Um and learning how to take rest, you know, I think as athletes we're taught go 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 so often. And while that's good and hard work is good, yeah. but it's at some point your body's going to give out, you know? And so I think teaching these younger athletes of, okay, what does it mean to push through when I'm tired versus when does my body actually need rest? And I think that's a really hard thing to figure out as a young athlete. Yeah, it is because a lot of the time your young cells will just keep going and yeah. we're most athletes you know they're very strong-minded very Mm -hmm. perfectionistic we have these tendencies to be super hard on ourselves Mm -hmm. right and and I think that's always been the case but the opportunities to play are even more now yeah and so and but what we know now about recovery that I in my generation we did not know was like okay go 
go sit in the ice yeah, over there. Right, right, you're right. done, right? But I mean, my ankle injury is stems from the fact that I had ankle surgery when I was 20 and they told me no PT. We don't do PT for ankles. You just walk it off. Like it all started oh my there. Goodness gracious. So, yeah, and I'm about to That's have my unreal. fourth surgery on the 14th because you know, it, it, the scar tissue that builds up, the fun- the functional movement pattern that's not there anymore. Yeah. So, you know, learning that stuff young, I mean, it will it will enhance your career. Oh, it's, you know, and and yeah. and the lifelong strategy of beach volleyball, I mm-hmm. mean, I've never played a professional day in my life and I cannot get couldn't get more out of the sport. Like so- it's my social outlet, it's my you know, yeah. it's physical fitness, it's everything. It's it- so fun so cool and like I so I mean I grew up in Florida and so um I do think I grew up around the more like professional like let's go hard you know I mean people enjoyed it obviously but um getting to Louisiana and you got to see a little bit that at Coconut but oh my gosh what like a culture of beach volleyball and no one's trying to play professionally you know and there's five complexes that have leagues every single night and like everyone just goes out and plays and hangs out and drinks and talks like it's so cool yeah how much people love the sport people who have no intentions of being good Absolutely. at the sport i mean like, you look at the vacations that pop up out of it yeah. like we were talking with savvy about uh, south of the border yeah and, like um jay and i went to he took me to central park and that community in mm-hmm. new york and i mean there is so much to be gained and that's what as i've walked through this i'm like this every place i've gone i'm like the people and the vibe are the same. Yes. yes. And it's such a connected community and I love that. Mm-hmm. So it, it just watching all these generations play like, yes, I, I love ballets and buying the AVP and how big mm-hmm. can we get this? And I pay attention to the points and I right. love watching professional athletes, mm-hmm. people that, you know, that can do things at a high level and bodies and motion favorites. Yes. But Really, at the, in the end, it, it's a lifelong game of relationships and yeah. community, and it's so much fun. It's so cool. The culture and the community is just like nothing else, honestly. And, you know, I um, I played with Olivia Powers, or Donna's now, okay. um, my senior year, and I remember we had a conversation, and um, we were like, I think we fell in love with the culture of the volleyball before we fell in love with the actual sport of the volleyball. Um, and so we really like connected on that point and that was something we talked about a lot, um, going into competitions and stuff like that. Um, but I just fell in love with the culture and just being around these people and like the people who tend to pursue beach volleyball are just so good hearted and, um, you know, obviously competitive still and like it's still professional And those things don't have to be mutually exclusive, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. And like... The fact that I can go out and play a competitive game, but you know, we're also hanging out at the beach. Like, yeah. like it's such a cool balance. Oh my goodness. I'd rather be, on, I mean, you can't take, take in the scene and go, I'd rather be inside in a gym with whistles that are yeah, like no. blowing my eardrums. <laughs> like, no, it's the best. Yeah. So, um, were your parents athletes? My parents were. Yeah. Um, my dad mainly played basketball and then my mom played soccer and was a gymnast. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So she's a little shorty. Yeah. I was gonna say, my mom's a shorty too. Yeah. She's 5'4". How tall is your mom? My mom's 5'4". Okay. Yeah. And how tall are you? I'm 5'11". Okay. Oh, you seem taller than that. Yeah. I'm I'll six, take that. I'm six feet. I feel like you're... <laughs> like you're, straighten up a yeah. little bit my posture. <laughs> but girls have gotten taller. Like, yes. I was tall for my generation yeah. and now it's like... Well, I kind of forget that I'm tall, especially on well, LSU, because I was like mid height, maybe, yeah. you know, and then I go out um, to like a restaurant or something and I'm with like my family and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. like, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually tall. <laughs> did you always like, did you like being tall growing up? No, I hated it. Really? I hated it. I was, um, Both I was this height players. when I was 14. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, here she is. Oh, Let's man. see. Jay, what'd you get for us? set one at the fives. Oh, this is insane. Um, yeah. it, Fives are very important for is, that, is this your senior year? Yeah, that was my senior year. Okay. That was the first game of Nationals. Okay. Yeah. And that was la okay, last year? No. Two. I'm a year out. No, oh, so last year. Yeah, last year. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. year after COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that everything time is such a strange concept. Such it's strange like pre COVID. Especially with COVID. It, yeah. yeah it, was, it, it was against LMU, so that was oh, that was the year okay. mm-hmm. LMU made the tournament set. So. Right, right, right. That was their that was their first year there, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, they had quite a year last year. They did. Should've yeah, been they did. They really showed up. Yeah. Um, but what a fun match. Oh, so so oh, fun. I didn't get to go last one. year, but I yeah, I'm definitely going to make it before. Yeah. I yeah. Have you been? No. I oh I have gosh. not. And I will love it when I go. Gold Shores has a special place in my heart. Yeah. A Lauren's pictures that she's posted. I'm like, oh, that looks so, it looks so, so fun. Cool. Yeah. So cool. Really fun. Yeah. It's so an awesome I, tournament. I want to jump in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. You, um, it, Gold Shores happens the same weekend as, as um, the NCAA men's semis and finals. <sighs> And it happens at St. Thomas Huntington. So wow. So no wonder there are, there are people that have like a three-way decision to make. Oh man! It also the same weekend as my 14-year-old's birthday. That's what I didn't. I man, missed. you got <laughs> like, it all. My, I know. <laughs> so I could, if if we can get Stanford to the um the Stanford men to the NCA finals, which is real. Uh, hey, we can talk about that. My son, <laughs> my say. son plays for um he's a sophomore at Stanford. Um, well, they got rid of their program and they got it back, oh, right? That was last year's battle. And oh a my half. goodness. Yeah. Fighter. Fighter. Yeah. Like I I had never been so shocked in my life with I was beyond shocked. Yeah. Cuz I mean, they were such a strong program anyways. Mm. And they have an amazing alumni base that like really kicked in strong and hard and and has we we the parent group the alumni group the thirty six strong because they cut eleven sports so they had a bunch of athletes come out and even athletes from sports that weren't cut yeah. coming out saying what what are you doing yeah and um but just the concept of having like my son had been a senior during COVID so we lost his senior mm-hmm. season yeah. you know at Loyola had signed with Stanford you're driving across town in July of before his soft his his freshman year was going to start mm-hmm. and that was the, the the news just dropped like you got an email that said like your program's gone i oh had to pull over God. they got an email that's how well they the, the players were on a zoom okay 30 okay. minutes before oh my god I, I was just moving through my day and i had to pull over i'm like am i reading this right mm-hmm. i can't I, I mean i must have read it five times and i was like just numb because you cannot so take sad. a kid, yeah. you know how much hard work you put in. It's not like all of a sudden you just go pick up another sport or decide to go join theater or, yeah. you know, yeah. that's your place to lead. Yeah. That's the place where you learn to lead at that age that then carries you on into so many different areas of life, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you don't just switch it up at 18. Yeah, right. So they did the right thing and they got it back, but it was not... Well, it's so it no scary small how COVID's affected so many of these programs. Like, I mean, LSU has been amazing with all of it, but, you know, not all the colleges have those resources, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, it's just heartbreaking some of the programs that have been cut. And talk about men's volleyball in general. Like, it's just not. It's not well. And, and it's it's such a great sport. Yeah. It's safe. It's I mean, relatively speaking, I mean, when you're talking about concussions and, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I've always been grateful that Luke plays volleyball and not football yeah you know yeah. so um even though he loves to watch it so do i but i'm better off than my not my kid out there i yeah. I, I like yeah, that I understand so that. um so yeah they they did the right thing in the end but yeah that is a busy weekend jay he's the Gulf Shore. starting opposite right starting yeah. opposite yeah right i'm playing all the way around <clears throat> yeah passing it's that's so exciting. Yeah, it's so much fun to watch. Yeah. I'm going to Austin this weekend. They're playing in a, a tournament in Austin. So oh, they'll so take fun. they'll play Hawaii this weekend. Yeah. That's yeah, gonna be fun oh. stuff. Um, so yeah, I just I love I mean, again, you just get to soak in the sport. Yeah. Everywhere I go. That's my favorite place to be. Like so wherever fun. I am, it's there's volleyball going on. That's yeah. it's my jam. So um but I do want to get into like where you're headed from here. Yeah. So I'm excited oh for gosh. you because I don't know if you've decided to move here or if you're training. And we, we were talking about that a little bit before. <laughs> I know. And Jason's got an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he can say it. Um, but, you know, there are pros and cons. And I will say, mm-hmm. you know, Jay says stay in Louisiana. It's too expensive out here. But, God, there's a beauty to being 23. You only live once, Jay. Yeah. No, I mean, it's something I've been debating since I got out of school. Yeah. You know, like I have an amazing opportunity to train with Taryn and Kristen and Drew down in Louisiana. Um, But at the same time, too, like there's such a strong community out here and it's fun to be a part of out here. And, you know, I don't have a partner. And so getting in the mix of that. So, I mean, there's so many things to weigh out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Well, the advantage is, is, is relationships. Remember, we were talking about it before mm-hmm. the podcast. It's um, you establish relationships, you establish fellowship. There, there is like a real volleyball community um, wedge between the fake, the like the pseudo volleyball communities. But the drawback is. At times and in time periods, this side of the the, the, the country can be non-inclusive, meaning mm-hmm. that you're at yeah. the beck and call mm-hmm. of of like anything you do now is navigated by how they feel about you, and if they feel yeah. a different way about you, they're not included. Where what you had at LSU and what you have going on in Louisiana, mm-hmm. um, non-inclusiveness be damned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So so that was one of the things where I'm like, you can still come out here two weeks at a time, four times a year, mm-hmm. which is expensive, but in the big scheme of things, it's definitely going to be renting here. Yeah. Um, and if it's about training groups, move. If it's not about training groups, um, because we just mentioned Qatar, right? They don't yeah. do training groups. The Norwegians don't do training groups. Right. Um, you know, they fly where they got or whatever. And and look at them. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, completely. Yeah. I mean, and gosh, the talent that's coming out Thank of Louisiana. You, Wendy. Right? This, is your, <laughs> this is your podcast. No, I'm, 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 are you I kidding me? I wouldn't just... be here without you. This this tech thing is yeah. so not my jam. So when he said he'd help me, I'm like, oh, I could get I could get uh, this going faster. She's, and she's, she's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's valid points um, too as well. You're so amazing, Wendy. No, oh. Wendy's great. Yeah, <laughs> Sure. I'm now gonna blush and get you know, all uncomfortable. Yeah. So. <laughs> you get a little shift in the seat. <laughs> Can I go now? I'm like, no. <laughs> getting better. <laughs> so, um, okay, pulled me all off my game. Um, where were we Brittany. going? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I know. I need to go to yoga. Kayla and I went to yoga. That was so the other fun. the other reason she's my little spirit animal yes. because she's like, do you go to yoga? And then we went and we went to a. Uh, the yin one really, right? uh, yin yeah. Class, yeah i don't know i still kicked my butt though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm still sweating my butt off oh it's the best it's, it's, i love that place soho I yoga anybody go try it it is for athletes like the most healing i got me oh my gosh yeah i started with the roll flow and release class it's all kind of trigger point therapy mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you look around and it's like it's all kinds of beat up athletes that are like well it, it's so good for the body so and the good. mind too. Yes. Like and both. that's what i didn't realize because i've always been a workout and see swimming would give me that like kind of mind release because it's quiet yeah. and you know you're by yourself but that breath to movement is super oh, healing yeah. yeah yeah i feel like that's something i didn't really figure out until recently honestly is how important breath is and i know we've actually had this conversation mm-hmm. um and i think yoga like invertly teaches you that it does i think especially coming from an athletic background like not knowing how to slow down mm-hmm. and then also not realizing that when you find that place of calm Mm-hmm. you actually can perform better. Oh, yeah. And definitely. I did not know that growing up. Yeah. I have been working on an overregulated nervous system oh for gosh. a long Talk time. Talk about your stress response in your body. Totally. Yeah. And so now I'm just obsessed with figuring that out because I, I learned how to bring it down, both mm-hmm. for myself and for my kids. And yeah. it it's just such a game changer. Oh, it's life changing, yeah. honestly. And that sounds so dramatic that it we're does. talking about breathing. I know. <laughs> like, but, oh, have you, do you follow, do you keep up with any breath work? No, not like, specifically. There's so many good people to follow that I've learned so much from. Um, Emily Hightower being one of them, I'll send you her profile. Okay, She's yeah, amazing. Um, but yeah, it's, and, and I just was never taught that stuff. Me neither. I, um, I went to a trainer recently um, and he's helping with a bunch of like functional stuff. Um, but one of the things he tested was my breathing and what did they find he was out? like, this is horrible. Oh. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, my, like my dad can do better than you. And I was like, oh. can you imagine your potential when you learn to like, go all like the, breathe all the way down to your diaphragm? <laughs> and I bet like, are you a mouth breather? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think that's what we've talked about. Mm-hmm. We're training the right yeah, breathing. the CO2 she tolerance. Th- the he, CO2, mm. that's exactly what he explained to me. Fascinating. It's like everyone talks about oxygen, getting oxygen, and it's like the balance in that gas exchange is so fascinating. Yeah. Um, and I apparently suck at it. Yeah. So <laughs> well, <laughs> that is what we're learning it's, Yeah. <laughs> currently. Because that's the part of being tough is like, okay, I'm tough, and you just like yeah. breathe through yeah. it, but you're shallow breathing, and then 
you're yeah. really limiting your potential. Mm -hmm. So that's cool that you went to somebody who's teaching you about that. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And like the fact that there's actually techniques of like how to train yourself to mm -hmm. do it. Like you wouldn't think about that because it's such a obviously an automatic thing in your body, but but it, um, it completely regulates your yeah. nervous system and finding that that balance, you know, between sympathetic and parasympathetic and what that can do for your athletic performance. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't know that until I was 40. No, I feel like no <laughs> one like really talks about like that parasympathetic yeah. sympathetic, um I did um, in life. a yoga nidra session or two with the TCU girls that came mm -hmm. for a training camp. Oh, I saw camp. a video of that, I think. Oh my gosh. It was so cool to watch these, like just watch everybody drop in yeah. and like bring it down and then mm -hmm. ask questions afterwards and, you yeah. know, going to all of those recovery protocols mm -hmm. that are so good for athletes who are yeah. working so hard. And that's so much of what I'm embracing in this new movement, this Be Better mm -hmm. website that I'm and course that I'm putting out. It's it's called High Performance Zen because athletes know how to grind. Yeah. For the most part, the ones who are getting to these levels and that I'm connecting with, we yep. know how to grind, but we're so hard on ourselves. Yeah. And if we don't know these ways to like improve to recover we mm -hmm. can improve right and like we're i mean like at lsu we have athletic trainers who are absolutely amazing and like help us um recover so much but so much of our recovery comes from what we do off to the side you yeah. know and i think really valuing breath work really valuing sleep really evaluating the way you eat like those are all recovery methods yeah. that we don't, you know, talk about that much. You know, it's like kind of like, okay, yeah, we know we're supposed to sleep. We know we're supposed to eat well, but like, why exactly? But until How you exactly? get to the science yeah. behind it, it's so compelling. Yeah. You know, and like actually feeling it too. Yes. Like, I think it's really hard until you actually feel the effects of it to understand just how important it actually is. And like, I'd like trainers are amazing and like so vital um, and such a great part of the college experience. But um, these other things. Help yeah, so there's much only so well. much you can do in the training room. Right. It's the same thing when you grow up and you, like you go have surgery and you go to your PT. Mm -hmm. He's gonna show you what to do. Right. But if you don't do the exercises it's more every the more day, more dramatic things. That yeah, help you it's with. like yeah. they're not gonna be able to reset you in one yeah. session and have it be the same. Yeah, so it you. is. It's like those little decisions, and that's the in, that's also been another interesting thing for me is I started learning about a lot of this cellular biology and recovery stuff because mm -hmm. my youngest is on the autism spectrum. Oh, okay. And so. I was trying to learn things that could help him and make his path a little smoother and easier. Right. And as I learned these things, I was like, well, that doesn't, that's just, that's human. That's mm -hmm. not even, that's not autism, yeah. that, but learning about the nervous system. Right. And then I started relating that to, wow, when you're trying to make little incremental gains for somebody on the spectrum, they're the same incremental gains that an elite athlete is yeah. trying to make. Yeah. Or even a high school kid who's trying to drop two seconds off of her time or, make mm -hmm. you know the next the, the twos pair like your yeah. your the little tiny things are what make the difference yeah. right and those and they come in the form of recovery mm -hmm. they make the difference and you but you have to stay with it long enough yes to see it that is that's so true yeah. like it's all about consistency and it's yeah. all about the little things and like you said like from a young age we're taught you know grind go 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 yeah. you know we wouldn't know how to work hard yeah um but you're so right like we don't talk nearly enough about slowing down and resting yeah um that's definitely been one of my what I meant to say mm -hmm. moments of like oh yeah I never knew yeah and now I do and I want to tell everybody like do it now like you don't yeah. need to get when it's like you don't need to feel this crazy burnout when you're going 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 you yeah. know you can come from um a place of fulfillment and I think that's the biggest thing about that how I view rest is like, I'm filling up my cup again, Yeah, you know? And like, um, I love this analogy of, um, in general, you can relate it to almost anything, but like you fill up your cup and you don't have to pour out, it will eventually overflow. That's and awesome. I love thinking about that um, like in terms chills. of rest. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, I think we're taught pour out, pour out, pour out, pour into the things you're doing. Um, and obviously, like I said, working hard is a great value and a great skill. Sure. Um, but I think really starting with the base of rest, let me take care of myself so then I can work hard, yeah. you know, 
and then I can work hard from a place of joy, not a place of like feeling as though I have to be doing yeah, that. Yeah, that's that sense of enoughness that you mm-hmm. hear people talking about. Yeah. When you ask yourself like, why am I doing this? And what's the joy that's coming from it? Right. Because it is easy to get on the burnout train as a college athlete, mm-hmm. as an aspiring professional. Like yeah. when you're trying to make a living, when you're trying to f- graduate, finish classes, yeah. figure out where you're going next, you know, and then you've got that athletic grind. I mean, it's... It's, it's a intense. lot. It's There's very not intense. a lot of extra hours in the day. No. So you do have to get like, and that's the thing I do love about yoga and yoga nidra and recovery mm-hmm. is like if you can get really efficient with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. you really can. Like you can block your schedule. You can become more efficient. You can yeah. reduce your distraction, but it takes that take, same level yeah. of discipline that you apply at practice. Yeah. It takes that same level of discipline to say like I'm going to put the cell phone away and I'm going to study for two hours yeah. and imagine what you can get done if right. you're not distracted. And I think in yeah. this day and age, that's something that my generation did not have to deal with. I mm-hmm. went through college, no cell phones, Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and that concept of like, everything's vying for our attention. It takes you away from. Yeah. And I think rewriting um, the narrative on that, mm-hmm. you know, you know, we talk about being an elite athlete and performing at your highest level is, you know, getting stronger, working hard, like we were saying, Um, But I think rewriting the narrative from a younger age of um, you can block out these things and you can work out hard those things and discipline can be applied to these other things as well. And I think um, we're doing a better job of educating people about that because I think that's the biggest thing is like we have a stronger education on, okay, how do I lift? How do I play volleyball? How do I um, maybe hydrate? I don't know, like things like that, you know, Um, but I don't think there's enough conversation or enough education surrounding um, breath work surrounding sleep surrounding nutrition um and the information that is out there it's kind of overwhelming yeah Um, so tell me about you got a nutrition uh, and certification from uh integrative nutrition so institute of integration integrative nutrition okay (laughs) words are hard yeah (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so i started that um after I finished school, um, I originally wanted to do PT and then I changed to chiropractic and then I had this like huge moment of like, oh my gosh, this isn't what I want to be doing with my life. What do I want to be doing with my life? Um, and so I still ask that question. Oh yeah. I think it's going to continue the rest of my life. (laughs) So, um, but so this was kind of actually my Nana presented it to me. Um, and it was kind of more of a means to an end, like, Hey, you can make this money while you kind of figure it out. Like, yep. you, um, and so I entered it and I just loved everything about it. Um, and the certification I'm doing, the courses I'm doing, like, I love the way it's structured. Um, I love the way they perceive education, um, and learning. Um, and they do a really amazing job of presenting all these topics, but they mm-hmm. present opposite views of the topics from researchers cool and so it's really cool because they really funnel like think for yourself like what do you believe works um and kind of giving you all of the information instead of just like this is the way i think this is work so i'm going to teach you this way yeah. you know they teach us in so many different ways and so many different viewpoints and such a wide range is of that information. an online online program yeah it's an online program okay um so it's all pre-recorded lectures um that i've listened so you can to go at your own pace yes exactly which, which is has been nice trying to play yeah. yeah um and so they cover things what i really like about it is that it is nutritional based but it covers everything else in your life and they really talk about how everything is because there's so much psychology behind so nutrition much. and so much i mean even like trauma response and things mm-hmm. that like yeah, you know whether eating, we're yeah like, whether we're stress eaters yeah. or mm-hmm. you know we don't eat when we're stressed yeah, disordered or, eating like totally. all of it um there's so, so many things that affect your nutrition and yes technically like what's good for you and what's not good for you is black and white but you know it, it does go into so much more and there's so many other things affecting it and i love that this program talks about those things yeah well and i what i have found the more i've learned um you know about all of these topics on health and wellness um nutrition included mm-hmm. i did a certification through precision nutrition but okay. um it's so interesting because i do think the biggest amount of shame gets built up when we actually know what we're supposed oh, to do yeah guilt and we don't do it yeah that's right so true but like doing it's the hard part yeah so if we have that that cognitive dissonance between mm-hmm. oh i know i should be doing this but when then we go out and do something else yeah and you let that get the best of you over time it really knocks people down i mean so i've been true. there you know yeah 
Um, I think that's a really, really big thing. And I think understanding that there's a bigger root there. There's something else going on and really taking the time to be curious about what that might be. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we're not really taught very much growing up. Yeah. It's like, let me just be curious. Instead of being hard on myself, instead of feeling guilt and shame and all these emotions, not that you shouldn't feel those emotions, obviously, but um, really taking the time to just sit with yourself and why are these emotions coming up? Why am I feeling these things? And really like getting real with yourself, yeah. um, I think is a really hard thing to do, Yeah. but I think it's so important. Um, yeah. um, oh, hey, we're, Hey, what's up? It's <laughs> we got a guest. Um, hello. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, I'll just sneak in. you can, it's hot. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. So. Lee, you could uh, just move the bag and sit on. You can move that thing out if you want to sit on yeah. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm perfect right here. All yes. right, cool. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, we were talking about that spot in between, you know, finding that guilt and shame between when you know you should do something. And mm-hmm. does do they cover any of those? Oh, yes. That's covered a lot Definitely. in the certification. Definitely. I think... Um, so the way it's kind of presented in this course is primary and secondary food. And so... They talk about primary food as he refers to it as a circle of life. And so it's um, aspects of your life like finance, your social life, physical activity, joy, spirituality. And he goes through like 12 things. Oh, cool. Um, and then your secondary food is the actual food you're putting in your mouth, the actual food you're eating, the nutrition part of it. And so um, I like it because they dive into kind of your primary foods first and yeah. like where are we on balance? Where are we feeling off? Is that affecting our secondary food? And their belief is that our bodies know what to do. We know what to do. We know the right answers, right? Um, But figuring out why can't we actually follow those things? Why can't I actually trust my body and what it's supposed to do? Um, And so I love that they dive into all those aspects of your life and they really educate us and have a bunch of different researchers who um, study all those areas and talk about those things. And so getting to explore that with people is kind of what they're teaching us to do. Yeah. Um, As well as having the nutritional information to back that once you kind of break through some of those blocks and balance out some of those things well that could be so so is your plan to kind of build that platform alongside starting you know working your beach volleyball career and then yeah being able to actually make Make, money and play beach volleyball which (laughs) is a really hard thing to do yeah um the question of every beach volleyball athlete um because yeah. there's a lot of flexibility in that. I love oh, the vision mm-hmm. of that because one, as an athlete, you're in, you're, you're helping people that, I mean, you have a natural born community yeah, that right. would, could benefit from your expertise yeah. and then you can do it on your own time, you know, with a flexible schedule. So those, yeah. those are two hugely amazing entrepreneurial things that you could yeah. incorporate. I am. Um, so I really care, um, or really care um I really have a passion for working with younger girls um and so what I'm kind of building right now is creating a program for high school girls transitioning into college um whether they're transitioning out of sport um and in college or whether transitioning into a college program Mm -hmm. um and kind of helping provide some education give some resources and some guidance along those um topics that we just talked about um and kind of how to apply them to um college because you know it's such that's such a hard transition it is. such a big yeah, transition a lot of eating disorders yeah and, and all things that I struggled and, with yeah. and my teammates had struggled with and um I really believe if someone could have talked to me earlier so talked to my teammates earlier like and just explored some of these topics and like felt a sense of community in those things you know because yeah. I felt so alone in all those things mm-hmm. like it was just me and in reality so many girls um that's another that's Experience another it. that's the vulnerability we were talking exactly. about. Exactly. Like just knowing that there's somebody else that's going through the same thing you are. But if you don't speak up, mm-hmm. you don't know it. And um, a part of it is I really want to also help support professional players. And so I want to do a mentorship program that has professional players kind of mentor some of the girls that I'm working with. I um, love that. Yeah. So to yeah. create like a bigger community, more conversation. And I think just like these topics are uncomfortable and yeah. for no reason. I mean, um, well, but as, as people like you in your twenties and then even older professionals start to normalize that conversation, it helps the younger kids yeah. see young that it's okay. Exactly. You know, and, and that's my biggest goal of that mentorship program. 
That's really cool. Yeah. And these are the kind of programs that I want to bring to the Be Better yeah. platform because all of you guys are out there trying to make a living or, you know, I mean, the schedule of trying to promote these things. Yeah. All of a sudden it became to me and I'm like, this could be a platform so those guys can go do what they want yeah. to do. And I don't have to, I, I play twice a week I'm for <laughs> fun. You guys are trying to I've like, seen you out there. get better. <laughs> and it's like, there's a lot. It's just managing the business and the entrepreneurial side. Mm -hmm. you, you really, that exposure, it, like we could all work together. And I, yeah. I love the concept of that abundance mindset where, you know, I'm into nutrition, you're into nutrition, but we're not competing against each no. other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and everybody comes together and yeah. the messenger for like, you're the messenger for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter what you do, so big. your person is going to come to you. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, I, I mean, I really believe in that. Yeah. I was, I did a really cool leadership internship when I was a sophomore and that was something that they talked about a lot it was like leaning into your most authentic self and being a leader um the people are going to be drawn to you who are meant yeah. to be led by you yeah. um and i think just trusting that process and just continuing to lean into who you are um and knowing that you're meant to yeah. impact someone in that way um, and you know it's the only way it doesn't become exhausting that yes. authentic self is yeah. so energizing mm -hmm. it's what gets you up and it, no matter whether it was a late night or it, it doesn't feel like yeah. it's a it, things can be challenging, but it's not hard. That that is probably something I've had to learn and really come up this past year of my life. Yeah. Is like things like you can create a beautiful life and things are still going to be hard, you know, mm -hmm. and not trying to push past that hard stuff you know yeah. like not just trying to survive that hard stuff you know like really sitting and being curious in it and feeling it yeah and i think and just like showing up as my complete self in those hard times i think has allowed me to enjoy like those winning seasons even more yeah you know and i think that's that's not comfortable at yeah. all um but that's definitely something that's come up a lot this past year of my life is just getting really comfortable being uncomfortable yeah um and well, we don't get to experience the high highs without the low lows like yeah. what are you gonna have to compare it to right exactly and like you don't when you do have those winning seasons and those highs like it's not like okay what's the next thing you know yeah it's like wow okay i actually get to like sit and embrace this and love this you yeah. know like that's so cool yeah it's so fun um and i actually listened to a podcast recently talking about that talking about all these high performers who you know, we're taught go, go, go. And you know, like what we've talked yeah, about. Absolutely. Um, and you know, we have all these goals and all these goals yeah. are really awesome and cool. And like, of course, that's a part of like growing and being an athlete. It's like you have all these big goals, but um, not just like jumping to the next thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I worked my freaking butt off to get to this point. Like, I'm going to sit here and enjoy it for a yes. second, you know, and that doesn't mean I'm not looking towards my next goals. It doesn't mean I don't have um more aspirations yeah. but it just you no, know it's that beauty to of, embrace of that. staying present and yeah and, and enjoying where you are yeah enjoying where you yeah. are yeah that's a great yeah. great way to put it so well there's so there's so much synergy and like yeah. where we're headed and what we're doing and i appreciate you being one of my featured athletes on be better i'm excited to do some more work with you on that Oh, no. <laughs> Whoa, this is that high oh, no. Calling a timeout, oh, trying no, to stop. Hell with that. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a rough was, ending right there. Oh, I was like, ooh, 2018. You're talking about a learning is curve there, moment. Yeah. <laughs> Talk, talking about picking your worst moments. Yeah, talking about, okay. yeah, that was a hard. <laughs> it was a heartbreaker. Yeah, oh, that was a heartbreaker. Yeah, I felt that one for a while. Oh. But, you know, well, um, to wrap things up, because I do like to keep these, I'm hoping mm -hmm. that young athletes will listen and get some yeah. great information from you, um, because I do think you're at that that perfect age range where it, it, you're so relatable, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm a mom. You were like, you're, oh, well, you seem but, very oh, well, good. Thank you. But like, you. Yeah. But like to, for, for junior players yeah. to look up and, and yeah. hear people like you talk, I think is really inspiring for them. Um, and I'm hoping to keep these to a length that like have time to digest some of it. Yeah, so, yeah. um, I think I just would ask you like, what, if you could give one piece of advice to a junior, like what, what would you say? Oh gosh, there's so many things I would yeah. say. Um, 
I think it really comes down to, um, you know, this sport, uh, beach volleyball sports in general are so cool and the culture is so amazing and the communities are so amazing, but you are so much more than this sport, you know, and the sport really adds to your life, but that's really all that it is, is an addition, you know, you're whole as is, um, and you get to explore this avenue, um, and this like cool space and place to be competitive and to like grow and do all those things. But like, it's not what defines you. Um, and I had so much growth as an athlete when I finally was able to pursue the sport from a place of freedom and a place of joy and curiosity instead of from a place of identity. Um, and I think being able to pursue it and separate those things is the biggest thing. Um, cause it's an amazing thing to be a part of, but it's not who you are. That's really huge. Yeah. That'll get you through a lot. I mean, that yeah. was a zinger, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Good job. <laughs> so where can people find you? How old are you again? I know. Oh, I oh seriously. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, where can people find you? Um, um, on social media. On social media. And, yeah. What's your so? What, okay. What's your handle? My handle is Kaylee. So Kaylee York, mm-hmm. and my name is spelled K A H L E E, which I know is a hard one for people because I get Kali a lot. Uh-huh. But <laughs> I love your name. I think it's great. Yeah. So just Kaylee York on Instagram. Okay. Um, and, and Facebook, if anyone out there has Facebook still. Yeah, you know, I know. Right? I go on it all the time. Yeah, I know. Other people. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Um, and she's one of my featured athletes on Be Better. Yeah. So um, thank you yeah. so much for having me. Oh, I love I, everything we talked about. I know. And we'll look have forward to, to, to more conversations absolutely. to come. We'll have to do yoga again soon. Oh, yes. That's, okay. That's a necessity. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this for yeah. me today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for the What I Meant to Say podcast. For more real conversations like this one, come on over to the Be Better community at www.bebetterwithwendyjones.com a place for athletes and parents to grow and find meaning behind what we do every day so that we can be strong on our own and better together.